Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is the letter coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Well, today's video, today's video is all going to be about knives that I have tried out. They're from Cold Steel that I've used for, for wood, wood crafting. This one right here represents several knives that are four maxes that I've used for wood crafting. This is the one that I'm going to use today. The other one, the, the green one that you guys saw me use the other day, is presently on duty in its in its uh, bug out bag. So I pulled this one out today. This one I've used also. And this is the, this is the um, SR1 that you guys saw me using the other day. So I decided to make a video today. I got a little free time today because I had a doctor's appointment today. I had to do my physical. And so, you know, got a little bit of extra time to have to go to work today. And so I thought I'd make a video with you guys and have a little discussion about um, the, the things I've sort of figured out. I'm calling this one a cold steel, even though it's not a cold steel. It's a Demco. Yes, it's my Demco, Demco Magna Cut. But the reason why it's out here is because all these knives are designed by Demco. I'm not sure about the SR1, though. I think this might be a cold steel, you know, design that, that existed before Demco came on. I'm not exactly sure about all the history on the on the SR1. So, but all these other knives, all these other ones were designed by um, Andrew Demco. I know that much. But these, the SR1s, I'm not sure. Because I know the recons existed before the... Um, before Demco came on with Cold Steel, and he's not responsible for designing those. And um, they existed long before he came on. And I'm not sure about the SR1. I'm not sure if the SR1 was one that he designed after he came on or if it existed before he came on. If, if, if any of you guys know, I appreciate it if you give me the answer to that, because I like to have it for my own little personal information. But anyway, these are my two SR, SRK, or SRKs. SRKs. I'm going to call them SR1s. These are SRKs. Survival Rescue Knives. This is the SR1. All right. So let's get into these. Let's just pull them out. Let's, let's remove the sheaths from them. I'll, I'll set the sheaths aside. This right here is my AK-47. This is the first knife that I bought with intentions of using it for field duty. For, you know, like wood crafting and all that other kind of stuff. The reason why I picked it, because look at it. It's a straight up tank. This is Italy 3V. Or USA USA um, 3V, CPM 3V steel that was made in Italy. This is not a hollowed out blank. This is a solid steel blank. The only holes in it are in for the, the, where they um, screw on the G10 slabs. So this is a very, 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 it's probably the most, out of all these knives that you'll see today, this is the most heavy duty one. I would say this is definitely the most heavy duty knife. And this is the way I carried it. And it's present, goes into one of my bug out bags. So does this one. I'm gonna set the sheets aside. I have it set up for horizontal carry also. And this is another very heavy duty knife that does wood crafting extremely well. This is the Warcraft. 3V Warcraft made in Italy. Both of these have G10 scales. Absolutely love them. I love 3V people. I like 3V is one of my favorite steels for like outdoor knives. And there's several reasons why I like 3V so much. One, it doesn't rust so easy. It's not like 1095 or any of the high carbon st USA steels from like, you know, 5160, I don't know, whatever. You know, all the, all the, all the high carbon steels that we all know and love. You know, the, all the ingot steels that we know and love. It's a, it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's, those steels rust very easily. This one, this one doesn't rust so easily. It's, I would say it's more like D2. As far as like the way it handles rust, I, I understand that you know, but then you know, I, I keep my knives clean and stuff like that, so I've never they never really had a chance to rust because I, I take care of things, I oil things and clean them after I use them. But uh, 
I, I, I've had these knives for, for I don't know, about five years now, five or six years, and they're excellent. Absolutely love them. These two knives right here, if you guys can get these, I would say get them. I think they're excellent knives. And they're, 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 they're you know, fairly not, not so hard to carry. This one's very heavy, but this one's not so heavy. This one, and they're both about the same thickness, but this one's thick all the way through. And this one has a handle that, that slims down, the, the blade tank. It slims down. So I think they did that to save weight. Andrew Dimco designed that to save weight. Absolutely love these. Now, I have a Taiwan one of these also. This is a seven and a half inch, I think it is. And I absolutely love that one. I don't use that one. That one's a, a 3V made in Taiwan, a DLC coated. But it's made the same way. So it's, a, it's got the Sabre flat ground blade, just like this one. Only it's got a DLC finish. And it's 3V also. That one, that's one of my apocalypse blades. I'm saving that one, people. I'm saving that one for, you know, in case the, the blank hits the fan. <laughs> this is the one that I use, though. I mean, it's basically the same thing, only this one's smaller. The next one I got for um, trying outdoors was this one. Magna Cut. Yep, the free rain. And I must say, this is probably my favorite out of all of them. I'm, I'm going to let you hear that right now. I like it. This is my favorite one. Next up, these are the newest ones. Absolutely love these two. These are the SRKs. This is the one I got for my birthday from Midway for $29.99. Both of the SRKs were my birthday gifts to myself from Midway. Got them on my birthday discount sale. Absolutely love these. I highly recommend the SRKs, people. This is the, this is the SK5 version with the Japanese SK5 steel. It's like either a 1080 or 1085 high carbon steel, comparable to like, you know, like a 1075, 1080, 1095, what have you, 1090. It's all, it's all good. They're all like about the same class of steel. Some of them hold edges a little bit better and some are a little bit tougher than others. Usually the higher up you go on the number, the, the more brittle the steel will get. But the better edge quality it has. Still strong though. Great. All, all the old carbon steels, USA carbon steels to me, and Japanese carbon steels. And I like the ADCR V2, the 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 um the German the German steel or Swedish saw, saw blade steel. I like that too. I like the Austrian K110. I like the, the Schleppner steel from Italy. I think it's from Italy. At least, at least all my slipper steel knives are Italian knives. <laughs> it's like a it's like a tougher D2. But there's a lot of great steels now, people. You know, it's like I I would say just get the knife that you really like, the one that you think fits you the best, and get and, and try to find it in a steel that's gonna satisfy the needs that you have. I set this one up, horizontal front carry. And that's what you should go for. For outdoor knives, I must admit, I really like 3V. I think 3V is my, one of my favorite steels. And after that, it might probably be like 1095. Because a lot of my outdoor knives are 1095s. And most of my outdoor knives that are 1095 are the real big outdoors knives I have. Like, you know, like, um, I don't know, nine inches or eight and nine inches and above. Like my BK9 and um, all the, the tops knives I have and the, um, and the old uh, 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 OKC, Ontario Knife Company knives I have. The big ones. Like the Raider Bowie and, I don't know, the SP50. Absolutely love this one, people. But I must admit, though, 
as much as I love this knife, it's not my favorite outdoorsman's knife. Not for woodcrafting. Not for, um, like, when I say, I should say woodcrafting. I should say for batani. Because everything else, it does everything just fine. But batani, you got this sharpened swedge. And also it did, you know, and you, saw, you saw me using it the other day. All it did was just eat up my baton. It just ate up the baton. And it's like, it's like you know, even, if, even when you hit this really hard, you know, trying to get through, uh, let's say, a knot or something, it's not, you're not really doing all that much because you're, you're really just cutting into your baton. Instead of, you know, because the, the baton's, uh, you know, it's like probably a softer wood than the knot. And so you end up eating up the baton and it takes forever to try to get to the knot. So I would highly not recommend getting a knife for outdoors use that has a sharpened switch like this. That's not a good, that's not a good, uh, good thing to have for a, a woodcrafting knife, a sharpened switch, if you ask me. That's my experience. I'm telling you from my experience. This one right here, actually, in my opinion, outdid this one in splitting wood because the swedge, even though it, you know it looks like it's you know can be sharpened, it's, it's still it's, it's it's dull to a flat point, so it's not like a sharpened swedge. I hope you guys I hope this is showing up so you guys can see that. So this one is actually does better at, at, at wood crafting, I think, than this one. And this one has a hollow ground blade too. Whereas this one has a flat ground blade. I prefer the flat ground blade over the hollow ground. But this one did a good job at splitting wood because I was able to, to hit it up here and not tear up my baton. So, you know, I don't know, you know, it's, you know, you gotta, you gotta weigh the good and the bad, you know, between these two, which as to which one you would want to get. These right here, this one right here is excellent. It's got a nice, it's a saber flat ground blade, but it's got a high saber. It's real thick behind the edge, so it's good for splitting wood, you know, for uh, batoning and stuff like that. And you can pound on this one as hard as you want to, and you'll, you'll never even think about breaking anything because this knife is, is built like a tank all the way up to the tip. Same goes for this one. This one does an excellent job at, at, at um, wood crafting, too, in my opinion. It splits wood really real easy. And these are only like five, five, and I think they're like five, five and a half inch blades, something like that. But they're three V. And these are some like on this, you know, these are all the knives that are on the smaller end of my wood, wood crafting knives. Just let you know that too. But this one does an excellent job also. I highly recommend these two for um, splitting wood, batoning, feather sticking, all, the, all those kinds of things. These two, these two do an excellent job. And this one, this one is the, this one is the king of the bunch. One thing I do like about these though, is that they got the longer blade, but the longer blade is not very useful because it's got a sharpened switch. So the long, this one having a longer blade doesn't really help me all that much. Whereas this one, as you can see, it, this is flat all the way up to the tip. So it makes it excellent for batoning, excellent for wood crafting. And if you're a hunter, a drop point is a really good knife to have for a hunting knife. For cleaning game and, and gutting deer and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is a, this is a, re, this is a really good knife. You know, I've, I've used it for fishing. I've used it for wood crafting. I must say that this is my favorite knife out of all my outdoorsman's knives so far. Out of all the ones I've tried so far, this is my favorite for this size. And what size is this? I would say it's in between. What we, what we got like five and six inches. Five and six inches for blade nuts. Let's, let's just double check that, make sure. Five and a quarter, five inches exactly, five inches exactly, six and an eighth, 
six and an eighth. So six and an eighth and five, five inches to six and an eighth. These are the ones I like. And, you know, there, there's others I still want to try out. But these are the ones that, you know, I would say that are, you know, designed by Andrew Demko and Cold Steel that I've tried so far that I like. <clears throat> and for my folders, the folders I would recommend for outdoor use also are number one. Yes, number one, the 4Max, the 4Max Scout. This would be my number one suggestion or... or uh, Knife that I would suggest that somebody or recommend that somebody get for using for outdoors. If they want, if you want to have an outdoors folder, this one could do all the things that these can do pretty much without any getting any damage or anything to the knife. Four Max Scout, and this is the budget Four Max Scout. You get these for under a hundred dollars. And that's the one I would get. I wouldn't get. I wouldn't spend a whole bunch of money and getting the S35VN model. This this one's a Japanese a, AUS 10A stainless steel, and these work perfectly fine, perfectly fine. And the way I use a folder in the outdoors, I'll use it for feather sticking, and I'll use it for um, um, batoning or splitting smaller pieces of wood into like kindling. After I, you know, knock out the bigger pieces of wood with the bigger knives, with the bigger fixed blades. I don't really use this to do the jobs that I would use these for. The a fixed blade I'm going to use on the tougher pieces of wood. Uh, on the uh, folder I'm going to use on the smaller pieces of wood. You know, like when, you're, when you don't need to be having a big giant knife or something like that. You can just use something that's like smaller and more comfortable. And to me, this is a very comfortable knife. And it batons, you know, very well. Same thing goes for this one. This would be my other choice. My top two folders that I would choose for outdoors use. Now these come in, these come in like different colors, and um, this one comes in in two different blade shapes. Um, it comes in a tanto and it comes in a clip blade also. I prefer the tanto because I'm a tanto person. I love the American tanto. I love Lindsay Thompson's cold steel American tanto shape. Most of my most of my self defense knives are tantos. I love the tanto, and this one is a really good one for outdoors use because it's a flat ground tanto. Most of the cold steel tantos are hollow ground, uh, a saber saber hollow ground blades with a flat ground tip. This one's got flat ground um, blade with a flat ground tip also saber hollow, saber flat ground. Super thick. I can't remember. I think these are five millimeters or four point eight millimeters thick, something like that. Can't tell you exactly. Four point seven seven, four point eight millimeters. So this is a super stout, super strong blade. This one should be about the same. Four point seven four. This one's a little bit thicker. See what I'm saying? These are these are some stout folders, people. Both of them have um, stainless steel liners. This one has stainless steel liners that encase the the pivot and the and the and the triad lock mechanism. The back spacer is G10. Handle scales are G10. Blade steels CPM S35VN. This one Japanese AUS 10A. It's got a Grivex back spacer, stainless steel liners, Grivex um, handle scales. Both of them have stainless steel pocket clips. This one has full stainless steel liners. This is a beast. I want a 5 Max. A 5 Max Scout. As you all know, I have the 5 Max also. And that's the other one I would recommend. That one's in my bug out bag also.
but this one, the green one, and the five max scouts, those are the ones that go in my three three different bags. All these are working knives. All these go to work. I love these scouts. To me, the scout is like the, the best deal you can get for a, a heavy duty survival type folder. At any price, I think it's the best. I think it's the best. The only thing that's better than this is, the, is just a regular four max, which costs a lot more. You know, this these you can get for under hundred dollars. You know, you catch the sales and stuff, especially like at Midway, it always has sales on them. You know, you get it for under hundred dollars. I've never paid over hundred dollars for one of these. And this this is this is this is the type of knife that will this is the type of folder that can actually save your life, save your family's life. This is a very heavy duty, super strong. This is a this is a no BS folder, survival folder. This is not, you know, a, a mall ninja type knife or anything like that. This one's for real. This one's for real people. This is this is one that you could you know you could depend on in, in a very dire situation. You could depend on this one. Same thing goes for this one. The SR1. I highly recommend the SR1s and the and the, the four max scouts. If you're gonna ask me what a heavy duty folder looks like, I'm showing you the two I think are, are the most heavy duty that Cold Steel makes. I know everybody likes the 8010 and stuff like that, but Four Max Scout to me is stronger, it's probably gonna be stronger than 8010. Why? Because the 8010 has aluminum liners. Aluminum liners are great, don't get me wrong, but these are steel. And if anybody, if you know about your metals, you know steel has a lot higher tensile strength than aluminum. So that's one thing that's going to make this knife stronger. Just the fact that it has steel liners. The, the 8010 comes with very big pivot, you know, uh, stop pins and everything else like that. You know, the 8010 is built like a tank too. But it's more of a high-end tank made with higher-end materials. And higher-end materials don't always necessarily make something stronger. You know, titanium is not stronger than steel. You know, so like when you get like a, the 5 Max, the one that I have, it, you know, I'm, I've been told that it has titanium liners and titanium backspacer. Which is better than aluminum liners and aluminum backspacer, you know, because that titanium has a higher tensile strength than aluminum. But it does not have a higher tensile strength than steel. So if you make a 5 Max Scout, I would expect that to be stronger than the, than the um, more expensive one with the titanium liners. So I, I hope they make a 5 Max Scout, people. I really do. I really do. I love my 5 Max. I love it because it says Demco on it. You know me, people. I'm a Demco fan, so I can't, I can't lie. I am a Demco fan. I love Demco knives. All my knives, pretty much, all my most favorite knives I own were either, you know, are either Demco knives or they were designed by Andrew Demco for Cold Steel. The one I got in my pocket. 8020S model. That's what's in my pocket today. Since we're talking about Demco knives, I decided to pull this one out. My original goat aluminum scales. Scale kit. This one's got skiff bearings. As you know, I like my skiff bearings. But that's what's in my pocket today. 8020S model. But these are these are great knives, people. And like I said, this one, this one, one of the reasons why I like this one the most is I'm gonna show you. I'm going to show you. Because as you all know, I'm a person with the flat behind. My posterior portion, my physical anatomy is extremely flat. And so, because I have a flat behind and, uh, you know, let's just say a little bit of a stomach. My waistline and pants and pants and stuff, you know, if, if, if the pants, if I have heavy things in my pants, my pants get pulled down. By the, by the weight of, of my pockets. So I usually don't like to carry things that are super heavy, people. Even though I really admire a lot of the really heavy-duty knives and, and everything else like that, I just don't carry them because it's not, it doesn't work for me because they pull down my pants. I don't like to carry this one in my pocket because it'll pull down my pants. But, you know, it's like once I go over like about six or seven ounces, 
That's when they start to get too heavy for me to want to carry because they pull down on my hands. But anyway, let's get to the point. Okay, what we got here? We zero it out. 6.9 ounces. Now I think you can see why I like this one. This one, when I'm out in the wild, or going fishing, or doing anything outdoors, you know, I'm in a place where I can wear, you know, my my uh, my fixed blade in the outdoors. This one I can wear all day long, and I forget that I'm even wearing it. It's it's, it's a very good knife to EDC, you know, as far as a fixed blade is concerned. If you want to carry a bigger, you know, fixed blade that's more capable of doing heavier duty tasks. This is it. This is it for me. I love the free reign. The Magna Cut free reign. I'm sure, you know, the, the Oz 10 free reign would be just as good. But this is the one I have. I have the, the American made Magna Cut. And this is the one I like with the drop point blade. The old, the original one with the drop point blade, not the new one with the Bowie, Bowie or clip blade. This is it. This one right here. What is this one? This is, see why I don't, I love this one. You know, this, like I said, this is probably the most heavy duty one out of all of them. I think this is probably the toughest knife on the table. My AK-47 field knife. But I don't like to carry it that much, even though it's a smaller size. It's got that five inch blade. Five inch blades are the ones I like to carry people. And it weighs 11 ounces. That's without the sheath now, 11 ounces. So now you can see why this is heavy. Why I feel that way about that one. Let's do the Warcraft. 9.5 ounces. See, still heavy. Still heavy. Remember, it doesn't have the sheath yet. Let's do this one. Now, th th these aren't the SRKs are much better. The SRKs, <coughs> I can carry these. I can carry these. The weight of these won't bother me. Let's see how much it weighs. 7.4 ounces. That's the reason why it's only it's only a little bit more heavy than this one. This one, three V, seven point seven. These three I can carry. These two I don't really want to carry, even though these two are probably the more heavy duty um, choices. If you're going to be doing heavier duty things, I would I would I would suggest these two. You know, because both of these two can baton very well because. You're flat all the way out to the tip. So you can hit on the tip as much as you want, you know, because you got a nice big, you know, flat area to hit on the tip. So these are these are better for you know batoning, if you ask me, than these two. But this one, this one's just as good. Because this one, this one, you know, you could use it the same way. These are all full tang. Two of them have exposed tangs, and these are full tang also, but they're encased. The tang goes all the way back to where you see that, that, that um, notch, and it's covered. But these are full tang knives, too. They have more of a, a tang like this one, only this one you can see the, you can see the tang. Remember, Demko, Demko you know, he, he, he worked for Cold Steel for a long time, so I'm sure he picked up on how Cold Steel makes things. And that's the way he made this one. But he decided to make his tank be exposed. Absolutely love these people. These are five millimeters thick. Saber flat ground. And this knife is the one I would pick over all of these if I needed a fighter. Why? Because now the sharpened swedge comes in handy. <laughs> if you have a fighting knife, you want a sharpened swedge. So, you know, out of all of these, you know, if I was going to pick one that, if I need a knife that could be a great fighter also, this is number one. It beats out the Magna Cut. It beats out Demko's Magna Cut. Why? Because this is more of a utility knife. You know, it'd be a great fighter too, because, you know, super light, super easy to maneuver in your hand. Great knife. Great knife. But this one's awesome too. Great knife. Love it.
Love it. Absolutely love it. So I have all these. I'm going to say my favorite, two favorites. This will be my favorite for, you know, total wood crafting use. And, and being able to carry it all. So I'm talking, you know, like all the, all the different aspects of the knife. Now I'm actually going to, I would actually carry this one, you know, because I do, act, this is one I do carry all the time when I do go outdoors. I know I know, I know I like this one. <laughs> this one's new. And I'm going to be carrying this one too, because this is a great, this would be a great hunting knife, fishing knife, outdoorsman's knife. You know, but it's not just, the, the one area that it lacks in is in Matani. But, you know, it's got thick tip too. Even though, you know, even though, you know, it comes out to a point, I mean, it's a sharpened swedge. But if you guys look at that, you can see it's thick all the way out to the tip. Matter of fact, let's measure it. Okay, let's see what we got here. Can we start back in the base? We're at 4.91 millimeters thick. Come out here, we'll go middle. 4.96 millimeters thick. Come out here. 4.93, still thick. Come out all the way up here. 4.33, still thick. Come all, all the way up, almost to the point. 2.04 millimeters. Go all the way to the point. 1.06 millimeters. So this is a tough knife, people. Very tough knife. Absolutely love it. Highly recommend these. These are awesome. These are awesome. I was pounding the crap out of that knife, and it... it yeah, it handled it like it wasn't doing, like it wasn't no problem at all. But it did chew up the baton. It is one that will chew up your baton. These knives right here, these are awesome too. I've I've used this one a lot. And see with the stone wash finish, one thing that's nice about the stone wash finish, these knives have done a ton of batoning. And this one just only did batoning for one day. And as you can see. Why well, I like the stone wash finish for knives that you're actually gonna use for outdoors use. Because this one, you just put a little bit of oil on it and wipe it down, and it, it takes off all the scuff marks. But this, you know, that's permanent. I can totally remove this finish. It's not, nothing but a, a, a Tough X finish. Tough X finish is like the old finish that Cold Steel used to put on their knives. And it's basically just a painted on finish. It's a really cheap, low quality. To me, it's like one of the worst type of finishes that you could put on a knife. You know, it looks good until you use it. <laughs> the Tough X finish looks good until you use it. But, you know, it's kind of cool, though, because, you know, you can see that it has been used, right? Whereas a lot of these knives, you can't really tell how much I've used these. I've used these knives a lot. All of these knives have been used a lot. And they all look brand new still. This one's been used a lot. This one's been used a lot. And this one, this one got used a lot. I've got a couple scuff marks on it. But it still looks good. Doesn't look like this one, huh? That's why rather than that and have that tough X finish. If you're going to put a finish on a knife, put DLC on it. I know DLC, you know, they're not going to put it on a $29.99. $29.99 or let's say $30 knife, a $30 knife. They're not going to do that on a $30 knife DLC, but they could put it on this one though. I think a DLC finish on one of these would be nice because DLC doesn't wear off like this does. It's hard to wear off a DLC finish. And that's all about all I got for you today, guys. Guys and maybe one gal. <laughs> I see there's one woman that watches my videos. Today's Friday. Friday, March 8th. Absolutely love these. Absolutely love them. Highly recommend them.
Great knives. Four max. It's hard to beat a four max, people. Because if I had to, a four max could do really do any any of the chores that these knives can do. I think. Even though you know, I still even though that this is a super heavy duty knife, I don't put on. I don't, I don't put put it through like super heavy duty things like I would really put like one of these knives through. But I've never had a triad folder fail on me. And I've had every other kind of lock fail on me. I've had frame locks fail on me. I've had liner locks fail on me. I've had plunge lock fail on me. I've had uh, uh, axis locks fail on me. You know, I've had them all fail on me before. Oh, except for except for the deadbolt. The deadbolt's never fell on me either. That's another lock that's super strong. But the thing wrong with the deadbolt, though, it doesn't self-adjust. And so as it gets old and worn, you get up and down play. But it takes a long time for it to do that, though. You know, but me, you know me, I'm a master fidgeter, so I wear them out. I, I really like the deadbolt, too. But nothing beats the triad. The triad is the king of the king of the heavy-duty locks, if you ask me. I know that I know the Atlas lock, you know, is supposed to be the new king or whatever, you know, according to the cold steel or whatever, but I don't know. I think the triad is still the king. I have Atlas lock knives. And believe me, I would trust the triad more than I would trust the Atlas lock. Atlas lock to me is like, you know, like a really strong fidgeting lock. You know, because most fidgeting locks aren't that strong. Your plunge locks aren't that strong. Your liner locks aren't that strong. You know, I'm talking about like far as like being able to handle like spine wags or weight hangs or anything like that. They're not that strong compared to like a triad. And um, and uh, and and the Atlas lock to me is like stronger than most of those. You know, you know, as far as like you know, most of the other like knocks that you can easily open with one hand and close. Oh, close with one hand without putting your fingers or in the in the path of the blade. That's why I call fidgeting locks. <clears throat> I don't know about the new snack socks though. That that one looks like it might be pretty strong, but um, I've never seen it tested or anything. But the way it's made it looks like it's strong. And with the with the the new um, ram lock from Microtech, even the ones that you know that 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 had the lock failures, there's a fix for that. And once you fix it, it becomes a super strong lock. So, you know, that, that's sort of on, on Microtech from that, you know, having it, making sure that their locks were fitted, you know, fit it right to the blade tines when they first came out. That's where they sort of messed up on that one, on their first releases. But, uh, but if you get one of those and, and, the, and the ram lock fails on you, there's a fix for that. And it's not even a hard fix. It's a simple fix. It's a matter of making the lock face fit right against the lock bar so that so the lock bar goes cover covers enough of the lock face where it doesn't become you know vibrate on and become unlocked so the ram lock's a good lock people that's what i'm trying to tell you and uh the other the other one that the atlas lock that's a great that's a great fidgeting lock and the other great one to me the best of all the fidgeting locks is the shark lock. The shark lock is the best. If you ask me, I think the shark lock is the best. It's self-adjust. It can handle my kind of fidgeting, constant fidgeting. It's easy to use, one-handed. It's just a fidgeting lock. Now, a fidgeting lock to me is not on the same level as like a triad lock. A triad lock is not a fidgeting lock. It's a working lock. <laughs> it's for, you know, a working man's knife. You know, it's for, for somebody who needs a heavy-duty, dependable knife that's you know, it's about as close as you can get to having a fixed blade. That's when you want a triad. So I don't even think a triad is, like, in the same category of lock type as, like, a fidgeting lock. A triad is, you know, it's, like, in the category, like, with a deadbolt. You know, where, you know, the lock is really built to be strong, and durable. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a very strong lock too. But you know, it, to me, it's, it's like the Atlas lock and the and the and the um, and the Shark lock. And I'm going to even say the Ram lock if you have a fix. You know, if you if you uh, modified it so it doesn't 
so you don't so you don't get the um, the spine whack issue. If you do the little modification for it, that's a very strong whack too. Once you modify it, and the other ones that are really good too, that I like I like I like the Sog XR lock too. And the reason why I like that one is because you get the flipper. The flipper gives you protection, but as far as like the strongest locks, I would say I'd say it's probably the Atlas lock and the, and the Shark lock. I would I'd say those are the ones I would depend on the most. Now those two, I would pick the Shark lock would be my number one. Now I'm telling you this this from experience, people, because I've used all these locks. I use them all the time. <laughs> but this is my favorite fix, Blake. Why? Because it's lightweight. It's super strong. It's heavy duty. I like the handle. I like the grip. I like the blade shape. It's got it's got a, a, a it's got a really high saber flat ground blade. It's a beautiful knife. Magna cut steel. Excellent knife. This is the one I would recommend the most. I know it's technically not a cold steel, you know, but it was designed. But this knife was made by the same person who designed all these other ones. Maybe not these though. Now, all these other knives, these are all Dimcos. Andrew Dimco had his hands on all these other ones. But I, I'm not sure about these other people. I need to find out about that. But I really love the SRKs. SRKs rock. Now, that's about all I got. I think I jabber, jibber jabbered along enough. I'll let y'all let y'all go and have a good weekend. Hope everybody's gonna have a good weekend this weekend. I don't know where Juno is. Juno's right here somewhere. Anyway, peace out. Later.